Welcome to Cards from Magic's Past, a series of short videos where we cover a single card from Magic the Gathering's history. For this episode, I'll be going over a classic black and green creature called Spiritmonger. Printed in the third set of Evasion Block, Apocalypse, Spiritmonger is a 5 mana black green 6 6 beast with 3 abilities. The first ability lets you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Spearmonger whenever it deals damage to a creature. The second ability lets you generate it for 1 black mana. And the third ability lets you change its color for just 1 turn at the cost of 1 green mana. Released in spring of 2001, Spearmonger caught the attention of players worldwide. This was mostly because creatures weren't nearly as powerful as they are today. So when players saw a 6-6 six, six for 5 mana with practically no downside, Spearmonger was immediately put to test in competitive tournaments. Its most notable deck in standard was Fires of Yavomaya. A standout enchantment from Evasion, Fires of Yavomaya gives all creatures you control haste, and you can even sacrifice it to give one of your creatures plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. Fires decks were primarily red and green, however, some splash black to include Spiritmonger. Those decks were often called Dark Fires. In fact, a Dark Fires deck made top 8 in Worlds in 2001 and became part of the World Championships deck that featured cards in Gold Border. Although it had success in Standard, Spearmonger was mostly known as a central piece in an extended deck called The Rock. For the uninitiated, The Rock was known as a mid-range black-green deck that ran a mix of discard spells, creature removal, and resilient creatures. This deck originated as a Standard deck when Urza's Legacy was released in 1999. Its original version featured Phyrexian Plague Lord and Deranged Hermit as its top finishers. The deck continued on and extended, which was when Spearmonger was added in. The Rock with Spearmonger had tons of success in the tournament scene, reaching several top 8 finishes in both the Grand Prix circuit and the Pro Tour. However, later versions of the deck slowly removed Spearmonger from its list. Spearmonger never received any reprints that would make it legal and standard again. However, it got its first reprint as a promo given out to Grand Prix competitors in the late 2000s. It was reprinted again as a rare card in the original Conspiracy set, as well as Iconic Masters. It's unfortunate Spiritmonger never saw a return to the standard format, and what's even more surprising is that the card isn't even legal in Modern. If it were legal in Modern, would the creature even be good enough to hold up against the creatures we see today? Probably not, since as of 2022, Spiritmonger is pretty much a bulk rare. Despite it being valued under a dollar, the original Apocalypse foil version is actually worth a good amount of money. So be on the lookout for those versions as they can go for nearly 100 times more than its non-foil counterparts. As for the artwork, there's only been two renditions of the Feigned Beast from Apocalypse. Both versions are distinctly different. The original by Glenn Angus shows more of the Beast's features, while the second version by Kev Walker is covered in shadows. The Beasts featured in both versions are designed the same which is great, especially when the newer versions tend to deviate from the original. If I had to pick one over the other, it would probably be the original. I am a stickler for the old school look. Plus, Glenn Angus's rendition of Spearmonger shows more the creature and has a unique look. That's it for this video. I hope you appreciated the story of Spearmonger. The Rock was one of my favorite decks to play and I always loved putting Spearmonger in my list. This has been Richard Castle Voice in this video. We'll have more videos in the coming weeks, especially inside the deck, as we will be going to a few more events over the summer. We hope to see you again soon.